Steve here in the Down to Earth Woodworking Shop. You know, working with a live edge natural slab is a ton of fun, but it does present some interesting challenges and the opportunity, frankly, to learn some new techniques. One of the things that occurs in a live edge or natural edge slab is when you cut that big old chunk of wood out of that big old giant log and you put it up someplace for a year or two to dry, you're going to naturally get some checking in the ends of the slab, possibly even some pretty large cracks. Inevitably, too, there may be some knots or other defects in the wood that have to be dealt with. In this particular video, I'm going to show you how I use a key. Now, some people call these butterfly keys. Some people call them dovetail keys. I actually think of them as bow tie keys because they look like little bow ties. But whatever you call them, they're a great way to stabilize a crack in a slab. See, a crack in a slab is an insidious thing because it could continue to crack as time goes by. So you want to stabilize it. And then, as long as you're doing that, if you use a contrasting piece of wood like I'm going to do here, it can actually be a decorative touch. So, let's go through how to design and cut out a dovetail key, then how to cut the mortise in the uh, slab to fit the key, and then install the key and trim it flush. So, let's get going. There's really nothing magical about designing a bow tie key. There's just a couple of things to keep in mind. Now, some time ago, I had made up a bunch of bow tie key templates and uh, I spent some time drawing these out on graph paper using the golden section and and figuring out the angles and the sizes and everything and, and when everything was said and done I decided they looked a little too machine made so I still use these but what I use these for is to lay these out on the cracks on the slab to determine kind of the size that's going to look best. Then when it comes time to really cut them, I sort of just draw them out on the wood freehand. I use a straight edge, but uh, I don't get real fancy with the ratios and the sizes because like a hand cut dovetail, I want them to look more natural and not machine made. Now cutting these out is really quite easy. This happened to be some scrap walnut that I had and I simply cut them out on the bandsaw. A couple of things to remember. First of all, you want to get nice straight edges. That makes it easier to get your chisel in and get mortises cut to fit these into place. The second thing is, is you don't want to make the ends here too wide because they can, uh, they can get weak there on the corner and break off. You don't want to get them too skinny because you want this uh, mechanical holding power to hold the crack together. So you kind of want them in the middle, a happy medium, so to speak. If you're thinking about a bow tie, don't get a Pee Wee Herman little skinny bow tie or a great big clown bow tie. Something kind of in the middle, sort of a Bing Crosby Fred Astaire bow tie should look just about right. Okay, so we've got a little crack here on this end, but it does go all the way through, so I want to make sure we get it stabilized. Since it's a little crack, I've got a little tiny bow tie, and I want to put this into position and mark very carefully where the mortise will be cut. Now, what I've done is I've taken some chalk and marked the top side of the bow tie, I've also put a mark over here on the top and a mark on the end so I can get the end for end uh, orientation correct. Now what I found out a long time ago is that no matter how well I try to hold these things, they have a tendency to slip. So if you use a little thin piece of double stick tape on the bottom, well it's hard to get off, then line it up where you want it 
and uh, then when you hold it down it won't have a tendency to slide so you take your pencil make a nice dark mark all the way around make sure you get the corners marked okay after that's marked off just pull it up take the tape off and there's your mark now the next thing that I do in getting prepared for cutting the Morris mortise is I'll take a knife and very carefully incise the edges of that pencil line for this I'm going to use my marking knife because it has a tendency not to stray off line like a razor knife might. And I'm going to make a very light cut and just mark it out just a little bit more to help out those pencil lines. This is especially helpful cross grain to uh, help you line up your chisel and get the uh, get the chisel cut started when you're cleaning up the edges alright sorry I'm left-handed so I gotta get over here now and do this part so now for the next step what I wanna do is I wanna waste out a good bit of the interior of this mortise before I start working with the chisels it's just gonna save some time and it's gonna make it a little bit easier. What I've done is I've taken my Festool router and I've outfitted it with a 1 8 inch um, down cut spiral bit and I'm just going to plunge in and make a series of holes here that's going to waste out a good bit of the interior of this key. Okay, so for the last uh, for the last little bit there, I uh, took the uh, dust collection attachment off the Festool router just so I could see, and I got in relatively close to the lines. But I've stayed a sixteenth of an inch or a little more away from these lines because. I like to trim those out by hand. The router can get away from you and if you go too deep it's tough to fix. Okay so I've got a variety of tools now to finish trimming out this uh, mortise to fit this key. I've got uh, a little crook shank uh, chisel that will just barely get in there to clean up the bottoms. I've got a mortise chisel and I've got a little offset chisel here that helps sometimes get into small places and then I have this um, <clears throat> Japanese chisel this chisel for whatever reason whether it's psychological or real I can get this chisel sharper than any other chisel that I own don't know really why but this thing is just uh, just really sharp so I like to use it when I'm trimming edges like this but first we're going to take the uh, mortise chisel and uh, using those lines that were cut with the uh, marking knife, we're going to demarcate those lines just a little bit more. You may notice that I'm uh, <clears throat> not getting too close to these corners and the reason being is this mortise chisel has 90 degree sides and these are not 90 degree angles so I can't get 
absolutely right into the corner, but we'll, we'll take care of that very shortly. Okay, so now with some lines to work off of, we can start making this fit. Okay, after a couple of minutes of work with the mortise chisel, this is almost fitting. Looks pretty good. Now, I've just got a little cleanup work to do, and now I'm going to switch to this uh, sharp Japanese chisel that I've got. And one of the things that I want to do is as I get down into the mortise, I want to undercut the walls just ever so slightly. And the reason for doing that is to make the insertion of the key easier and also to give a place for the glue to go because we're going to glue this baby up pretty good. Okay, so that's, uh, that's a pretty good looking uh, mortise there and uh, seems to fit about right. Um, the one thing about this is, is you want to make sure that you got pretty good fit because once you start putting it in there's no coming back out. So uh, you want to make sure that you've got a snug fit but not so tight that you can't get it pounded down in there. Okay so my last little step here before I glue this in and call it a day is I'm going to mask off around these edges just to keep some of the glue squeeze out off this wood try to be a little neat with things okay and the glue that I'm going to use is uh, tight bond extend and it's not because I need working time it's just that over I don't know I may be wrong about this but it seems like the tight bond extend is a little slipperier and sometimes it seems like I can get things to fit in a little bit easier when they're tight when I use the tight bond extend so let's glue this thing in Now I'm going to put the glue on pretty good here. As you can see, kind of spilling it around. I'm going to make sure it gets on the walls of the mortise. Alright, got it oriented correctly. Glue off my fingers. And we'll pound it home. And there we go. So I will uh, now clean up this excess glue and remove the tape. And tomorrow, after this is set up nice, we'll cut this off flush and we'll have a pretty little bow tie in the midst of this big giant slab. And there we go. So yesterday we uh, cut out the uh, bow tie key and we traced it out and cut out the mortise for it. Now this uh, bow tie key was made out of some really thick stock so I've got to trim this now flush with the surface now that the glue's dry. Um, what I've found is uh, this is off of the back of an old uh, three ring binder that was used. The front of it had a label printed on it. I cut the backs off those and save them because they're really handy to have around the shop. It's a good thick plastic material. So what I've done, I had traced out the bow tie key on this and I cut it out with a razor knife and this will fit right over this key down flush to protect the surface of the wood while I'm sawing this off. Now I have this nice uh, flush cut saw. This is from Lee Valley 
And the advantage of this saw is, is that the teeth are set just to one side. The blade says this side up. So you're flush on the back side and the only set is on this side. So in theory, it shouldn't scratch the material anyway, but I like to use this. Now this is going to leave it raised still just a little bit above the surface, but we'll cut that off with a block plane or a chisel or we'll just sand it down. So here we go. Now this saw cuts on the full stroke. And there we go. So a little trimming with block plane and we'll have this, uh, this done. Okay, so now with a uh, low angle block plane set to take a very fine cut, I'm just gonna trim this down and get this flush with the surface. The plane got it so, so pretty. So let me give you a close up look at that. And there we have it, our finished bow tie key. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing how to make and install a butterfly key. In the next video, I've got a couple of other problems with these natural edge or live edge slab tops. And one of the problems is there's a couple of pretty big knots with big old cracks and voids here they got to do something with before the top is really ready to be finished. So in the next video, we'll deal with that. Thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.